Hey guys, I came down to the garden kind of expecting it to be really cold, so I had a sweatshirt and a jacket, and man, it's actually pretty hot. I think we're going to be in the 70s today, so it's uh, it's definitely getting a little bit warmer. Um, but I have a bunch of onions that I purchased as onion plants this year. I started a ton from seed, but my germination was really spotty. So then I tried to sprout some in paper towels, and although those sprouted amazing, I mean, I probably had about 95% germination. When I put them in the soil um, and then put them under the grow lights, they just, they just didn't do well. So I do still have some up underneath my grow lights, the ones that did survive, but I was concerned that I wasn't gonna have enough for the year. So I went down to our local farm store and I bought onion plants. So there's a couple different ways that you can grow onions. So from seed, like we just talked about, um, I was really successful with that last year. This year, not so much. Another way that you can do it is to buy sets, which are basically like tiny little onions, and you'll get them at a garden store or Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, the reasons that I don't like to do them from sets are because basically what they've done is they've started to grow that onion plant. Then they stop the growing process. They package them up, send them to the store, and then you buy them, you pop them back in the ground, and then the growing process starts again. And sometimes what can happen to the sets is that I think they kind of get a little confused. They can go to flower very quickly. Um, and once that onion flowers, you have to pull it. It's done, it's growing, it's not going to bulb up any further. And so you just need to pull that plant out. Another reason why I don't like to go with the onion sets, specifically like at Home Depot and Lowe's, is because they only sell long day onions. So onions are what's known as photosensitive. So they need a certain amount of light in order to bulb up. Now, if you live in the northern half of the United States, you need long day onions because they have a very, very long amount of sun during their summer days. In the south, you need short day onions. We don't have as long of a summer day as the north does. That never made sense to me, but that's how it works. So I need short day onions. So if I plant long day onions, I am not gonna get them to bulb up because they won't have enough hours of light during the day. And then the final way that you can grow them is you can just purchase onion plants or onion starts from your nursery. Um, there's places called Dixondale Farms. Um, so you can buy them from there and you can make sure to get your specific type of onion that you need in your area. And so I'm gonna be planting the plants today and I'm gonna show you how I do that um, and what I'm adding in the soil to really ensure that these things take off and that I get a great onion harvest this year. You'll want to plant your onion plants six weeks before your average last frost date. Now here in the upstate of South Carolina, that is the first week of March. So that is when I'm getting these onion plants in the ground. So onions can tolerate temperatures down to 20 degrees, but that's only if they have a really good root system like these plants do. So I would watch your forecast. And if you're forecasted to get down below 25, I would hold off on planting your onion until those nighttime temperatures are coming up just a little bit. You do want to make sure to get your onions in the ground so that they have enough time to bulb up during those long summer days that happen right around the summer solstice, which is in the end of June. I'm planting my onion plants in raised beds because they like well-drained loamy soil and I have made sure to amend these with some really nice loose compost. They also like a pH of about 6.5 to 7. You'll want to plant your onion plants about one half to one inch deep and about four inches apart. This is going to give these onions the ability to have enough room and enough nutrients and water to develop into that full bulb that you're looking for. Now I'm hoping to get about 75 onion plants in two of my six foot by three foot raised beds here. So I may have to crowd them in just a little bit, but that's okay because I can come back and harvest green onions in about four weeks from the time that I'm planting here. And that will still give the other onions the opportunity to have the space to bulb up and give me those large onions that I'm really hoping for um, that I'll be harvesting in late summer. Now you're going to see here that I've sprinkled a powder in each one of the trenches that I'm planting my onions in, and that is rock phosphate. So the reason that I use that fertilizer when I'm planting crops like onions and garlic is because I really want to encourage good, good root development so that during the summer months when the onions are focusing on really growing big for me, they have a great root system to take up all of the nutrients that they will need. Now about a month after you plant, you're going to want to 
are fertilized with a high nitrogen fertilizer. So you can use synthetic fertilizers like an ammonium nitrate that has about a 2100 rating. Or if you wanna go more natural and organic, you can use blood meal that is like a 1200, but you'll just have to use double the amount of the blood meal and just understand that blood meal may take a little bit longer in the soil to break down to become available for your plants to use. You'll wanna continue on with that high nitrogen fertilizer every month until you start to see the soil around the base of the onion plants start to crack as that onion starts to bulb up. Once the bulbing process begins, you can stop fertilizing and just let that onion grow and go tend to your other crops. One of the great things about onions is that they will let you know when they are ready to harvest. So the tops on onions will start to bend and fold over. And once that happens, it will no longer bulb any further. So they are ready to be harvested. Now, some people will go and bend the tops over prematurely. And all of that does is stop the bulbing process. And it makes that onion less likely to be able to be stored for a long period of time. What can happen is once you get that onion in your pantry or wherever you're storing it, it has a higher likelihood that it's gonna start sprouting. So don't bend your onions over prematurely. Once you get your onions in the ground, you're gonna to wanna to give them a nice good watering. And then throughout the season, if you can do drip irrigation, that is going to be best to prevent any type of foliar diseases. Would you bring me down a drink? Thank you. You don't want me to film you? Oh, I think he's a little camera shy. One of the things that's really sweet that my kids do is they always come down and um, check on me if I've been down in the garden for a little bit. So um, they always bring me water or at least something to drink, which is really nice because I hate to run back up to the house when I'm in the middle of working. After I had gotten my short day onions in the ground, I placed an order with Dixondale Farms. I ordered an entire case of shallots from them. Now this is about 1,500 shallot plants and I am going to split this in half with my friend. Now the reason that I decided to do this was because shallots have a storage potential of seven to eight months. And I really wanted to see if I could store onions over the winter season because short day onions don't store well. As soon as you get your onions from Dixondale Farms, what you'll wanna do is break them out of their little bunches and you're going to want to lay them out so they get some good airflow. And you're gonna just put them in a cool place no water, no soil, and they can live off the bulb for up to three weeks. So if you can't get to them right away and plant them, that is okay. So when I finally did get down to the garden to plant these things, um, I decided that I was gonna plant everything right in the front of my garden with all of those galvanized raised beds so that all of these beds would be onions. You'll wanna plant these the same way that you do your regular onions, about a half to one inch deep except these don't need a four inch spacing. They only need a two inch spacing because shallots do not bulb up like your typical bulbing onion does. They are a smaller onion and more of like one of those gourmet type things that you would find in the grocery store. If you go to buy shallot plants, there's really no varieties listed. They're just listed as shallots and all shallots are long day onions but I have seen people be successful with growing these and storing these in the south. So hopefully that is going to be an option for me. The weather is absolutely beautiful here today. So we are taking advantage of our clothesline. I, I don't know that my girls are as excited about it as I am, but it definitely gives our clothes that fresh scent and it's gonna save me a lot of money on our electric bill this summer. I also had another little helper down in the garden here, or at least he thought he was helping until he decided to go ahead and jump in my bed. When I placed this order for all of these shallots, I don't think I was really thinking how much work it would be to plant them all and how much space they would take up. I ended up having to amend two more beds because I still had a ton of onions to plant. Um, when it was all said and done, I had nine raised beds that are taken up by bulbing onions and by shallots and the girls behind me are working here to take this spinach out 
out because I need that bed as well for these onions. So it ended up being quite a long day. It was about three hours of planting and you can see here they all are as you walk down into the garden um, and they look beautiful. And like I said, in four weeks, they'll be ready to harvest as green onions if I wanna do that. Okay guys, well I hope that that video gave you some information um, on growing onions so that y'all can be more successful. I hope those little tips of what to amend the soil with at different times is gonna help you guys. But anyways, thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. And I wish you an awesome garden season because it is coming very quickly.